Hello everybody, I'm Nino Leitner and this is Cinema 5D. Today I'm going to take the new GH5S for a spin at night and put it up against its older brother, the GH5. Let's see how well this really performs in low light. It's here, Panasonic took a page out of Sony's playbook and introduced a light sensitive version of their very popular GH5 camera. It's called the GH5S. Just like with the Sony A7S series cameras, the S stands for sensitivity. And that's exactly what Panasonic means in this case as well. And they actually managed to get a more sensitive camera into the same body by employing a lower resolution sensor. Here we have a 10 megapixel sensor instead of the 20 megapixel sensor we had in the GH5. This doesn't really matter for filmmakers, but it does matter for photographers. So this is first and foremost a video camera, a filmmaking tool, not a photo camera anymore. The only advantage you lose in the video version of this camera in terms of resolution is the 6K anamorphic mode. This is kind of niche anyway, and if you don't need it, it doesn't really matter. But if you want to shoot 6K anamorphic, you still have to go with the GH5. This, on the other hand, still does support anamorphic shooting if you have the right lenses, but only in 4K. The GH5S also comes with the V-Log, the logarithmic flat image profile pre-installed. So unlike the GH5, you don't have to purchase it separately. On the GH5, this was an extra $100 purchase. But let's be brutally honest. The Panasonic GH cameras were never great in low light. This is the main reason, or one of the main reasons, why I always preferred the Sony A7 and particularly the A7S series. Because, of course, they are a full-frame sensor, so it's twice as big as the Micro Four, so, micro four Thirds sensor in these cameras. But also much, much more light sensitive. But this time it really looks like Panasonic got the light sensitivity right for the first time ever in a Micro Four Thirds camera. So let's go out and have a look at the footage. You can already clearly see the differences in noise between the GH5 and the GH5S on the lower ISOs if you compare them side by side. On the first two tests, we didn't compensate the aperture for correct exposure, which is why the image gets too bright quickly but it shows how much more light sensitive the GH5S is compared to the GH5. The maximum ISO on the GH5 is 12800 both in V-Log and all the other picture profiles. On the GH5S it's 25600 in V-Log, but it goes up all the way to 204800 in all other picture profiles with the extended ISO range. On the final test we did compensate the aperture for exposing the image correctly, so the noise level can be more easily compared. When it's that high I wouldn't exactly call it very usable anymore, but at least it's possible to capture something still. Thanks so much for watching this video and if you liked what you saw, please hit that subscribe button below that video and also the thumbs up so you can see more of this. And stay tuned and also don't forget to watch Johnny's first initial hands-on with the GH5S where he runs through all the features of this new camera. Also there's a lot more content coming about this camera so I'm also planning an autofocus test as well as a comparison to the a Sony a7S II which will be really interesting because I think of these two cameras will be the new low light kings so the question really is who's the real king thanks for watching and stay tuned <laughs>